Trouble seems to be brewing in one of the few institutions still capable of holding the people accused of state capture to account. It's called the master's office, and some of its more dedicated officials appear caught in a power struggle with the political connected and their vested interests. If the wrong side wins, the consequences could be severe. Bongani has this investigation. This tall building in downtown Pretoria is home to the Department of Justice. Under its leadership is the master's office, where deceased, insolvent estates and trusts are processed. It may sound boringly administrative, but what happens inside these walls is anything but, because events overseen by the master's office involve billions of rands and are of great interest to politicians. I was pushed out without having done anything wrong. Mike Shishonga, a former deputy director general in charge of the master's office in 2003, defied his minister, took a stand against corruption and paid a price. I can't be allowed to continue in the department because the minister or whoever will not get his way. Now there comes the uh, trumped up charges. He was suspended and disciplined for blowing the whistle. He fought and won at the Labour Court and returned to his office in downtown Pretoria. In my case, they said, OK, fine. I let him go to the office. They said, OK, have your PA, have your computer, but no work. So I made myself busy by uh, writing a book. The book is called uh, Whistleblower. Eventually, Mike won his constructive dismissal case, but both he and his wife Cecilia were pushed out of their respective roles as civil servants. From 2003, actually, my life has never been the same again. I was told that, uh, you know, I will never get a job in South Africa. I thought it was a joke. It's true. So life was very, very difficult. Even when it's hot, you want T, 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 Before he left the Department of Justice, Mike appointed Christine Rousseau as an assistant master. Now, as her career comes to a close, what happened to Mike is repeating itself almost 20 years later. I worked very late at night. I did so many projects. I was involved in training. I always believe in the good of other people and it's disappointing. It is disturbing to be treated this way at the end of my career. For more than 33 years, the master's office was a huge part of Christine Rousseau's life and she rose to the position of deputy master in charge of liquidations. Powerful position? I would say so because you make decisions on appointments of liquidators. The Master's Office is the sole government agency that can appoint and remove liquidators. And that is important because as companies fold, it's up to a diligent liquidator to recover money and report any criminality. The collapsed VBS Bank is one such example. So a company essentially is very naked yes. in front of liquidators. Yes, liquidators who do their job properly. But not all liquidators do. A friendly liquidator may look the other way, so it's up to civil servants like Christine to ensure that liquidators do their jobs without fear or favour. But some of the companies that fold have ties to powerful interests, and there are money trails that those in high office may prefer to keep hidden. Now, if you control the master, you control the liquidator, because in terms of law, the master can direct the liquidator what to do. John Walker is Christine Rousseau's attorney. John, can you give me an idea of the kind of power that resides in the master's office? Most of these perpetrators of state capture that we have seen have conducted their affairs and their doings through companies. When these companies are liquidated, then the master takes over. And by implication, the liquidator takes over. Now, in my experience, the only people who still investigate corporate fraud are liquidators. 
Christine Rousseau has presided over the liquidations of some of State Capture's most criminal companies. In 2012, we first met her and attorney John Walker at an inquiry into the Aurora gold mine. Stripped by its directors, it led to miners starving and the mine closing down. Zondo Mandela, Jacob Zuma's nephew Kulubuse and his lawyer were at the center of this embarrassing scandal. Later, her toxic portfolio included the liquidation of Prasa Divisions, VBS Bank, and more recently, two central state capture liquidations, Trillion and Musasa. Ultimately, she has presided over matters with a lot of political heat. Absolutely. Would that then make Christine Rousseau a target? Christine has been a target for quite some time. Over 17 years, Musasa grew into a giant of a company. Gavin Watson was the man at the helm, and South Africans may remember this footage of him counting out cash for bribes. Uh, Ten brother. One million all right. Virtually all their wealth came from government contracts. They manipulated tenders, paid millions in bribes, built houses for prison bosses. The NPA, ministers, current and former, Musasa's corruption was on an industrial scale. And when the special investigating unit began to dig around, the company destroyed evidence and brought the investigation to a standstill. And tossed him to go get us some petrol. He brought the petrol and we uh, poured over the items, lit it and burnt everything, burnt all the evidence. But in early 2019, Bosasa's former COO, Angelo Agrizzi, took the stand at the Zonda Commission and told all. The party was over. By then, the directors had renamed Bosasa to African Global. They hastily placed it into voluntary liquidation, hoping to control the process. But that's not how things work. You must understand one thing, Bungard. When a company or a person gets liquidated, all of the assets and money immediately vests in the office of the master from that point in time. It's only when the master appoints a liquidator that the assets move over to the liquidator. But it doesn't become his personal assets. He must now administer that process under the supervision of the master and according to the law. But before a liquidator was appointed, SARS, the company's biggest creditor, heard that once again evidence was being destroyed. So they asked the master's office in Pretoria to move quickly and appoint their preferred liquidator, Cluter Murray. You literally rocked up there with chains and locks? Yeah, it's not, not that easy, but we did arrive there unannounced. We established where all the documents were kept. Keep in mind that at that stage there were all kinds of rumours flying around of documents being destroyed. The liquidators team worked the entire weekend to download the server information and saved most of it. Was there any evidence of an attempt to destroy information? Correct, there was. There was a wholesale burning of documents that was confirmed by the actual individuals who did that. From the moment Kluti Murray was appointed as the Busasa liquidator, there have been concerted efforts to get rid of him. The acting chief master, Tessie Besedenhood, had recommended Kluti Murray's appointment, and Christine was the custodian of the Busasa file. Suddenly, all three of them became targets of a campaign to remove them, and Murray fought a court battle right up to the Supreme Court of Appeal, which gave judgment he could stay on. They had what I would describe as a planned liquidation. But yeah, I was appointed, which was not part of the, of the bigger plan. Murray is not a popular guy. He's been conducting a 417 inquiry. It's a confidential but powerful tool in the hands of liquidators to recover money, establish director liability, and recover debts. A final 417 report is often dynamite. A lot of the people who have been implicated in the State Capture Commission, even when they accept that they receive benefits from Bosasa, will say, but hang on, there's no smoking gun. The 417 removes that doubt. It does. The 417 effectively opens the door to the cupboard with all the smoking guns. Then, in July last year, one of those smoking guns went off here at Lutuli House. 
Busasa had donated 3.6 million rand to the ANC, and the liquidators sent a summons to pay the money back. Within weeks, it had found its way to the Department of Justice, and that's what was used to suspend Christine Rousseau. The grounds for the suspension is that she would interfere with the investigation on who knows what grounds, and secondly, that she would intimidate witnesses working for the state. This just simp it doesn't make sense to me. And so Christine waited, but was never charged. The department said she'd omitted to tell the SIU about an amended certificate of appointment on Bosasa, but she had been following a court order. So who suspended you? When I asked the person who brought my suspension letter, he told me that it's the department. And that's it? There's that's nothing it. you can do about it? Yeah. Hang on. You are working in the master's office. You are, in a sense, having oversight on some of the most politically charged, certainly high-profile liquidations. Yes. And some nameless, faceless person can remove you? Yes, apparently. Does it suggest to you, then, that powerful interests wanted you out of the way? It definitely does. And the fact that I am not given a name to link to my suspension is even more suspicious to me. How many times have we seen this playbook? An investigation into the affairs of powerful interests and a public official just doing their job, but they're in the way. And so they have to go. Acting Chief Master Tessie Besedenhout was also suspended. She was charged for overextending her powers to recommend Klutimari's appointment, even though an SCA ruling found she had done nothing wrong. But for the swift action of these two officials who have now been suspended, I don't think anybody would have realised the extent of what has happened in Busasa. So now you've got an attempt to remove the liquidators that seized that information swiftly and the officials in the master's office that appointed those liquidators. That is correct. That is where we are right now. We sent a long list of questions to the Justice Department, but were met with silence. I think the Basasa matter has been used just as an excuse to get rid of these two people. Is this just about Busasa? It's not. It's much bigger than Busasa. Keep in mind that a lot of the entities that benefited from state capture might go into liquidation. All of these companies need to be investigated. And if you control the master's office, you can ensure, from a political point of view, you can ensure that a liquidator is appointed that don't ask the questions. So is that the reason for the sustained campaign against Murray, Rousseau and Besedenhout? Why is it that the Department of Justice is trying so hard to get rid of its senior officials? And now it seems an unrehabilitated insolvent is being used to carry out the smear. Enter Mario Rocha, a failed businessman who calls himself the slayer of liquidators. But curiously, he has access to confidential information that has absolutely nothing to do with him. Insofar as it pertains to your matters, what's your problem with Clute Murray? He's a corrupt, colluding, racketeering individual, liquidator. Clute Murray has liquidated two of Mario Rocha's companies. He also has an interim court order against Rocha to bar him from defaming him, which didn't stop Rocha. We weren't liquidated in terms of the law. We were liquidated in terms of Clute Murray's law. Is he that powerful? Why is it that nobody has ever taken on, on Clute Murray and come out successfully? Because he controls the courts, he is that powerful because why? He was made powerful by Tessie Bezernot, Christine Rousseau. What are you accusing Rousseau and Bezernot of? I'm accusing them of not following the law and following the process in terms of the appointment of liquidators. Before there was any publication of the suspension of Mrs. Rousseau or Mrs. Bezernot, Rocha addressed an email to all and sundry recording that they would be suspended. Now, my first and logical question to you would be, how did he know that? But how did you know? Um, through various uh, people that have informed me. Who, uh, who are those individuals? Who told you? I cannot divulge that. 
But I will tell you that I am witness number one in this country against this colluding You're an ordinary member of the public. These are senior officials in the master's office and you had information that they would be suspended? How? This is a great country. People have got a freedom of speech. So now if somebody comes to me and says, this, this is what's happening and... Who is uh, that somebody? Officials are sitting in, for example, the SIU. Those officials... Someone from the SIU told you they would be suspended from the master's office? Correct. In 2020, the SIU began to investigate serious maladministration in the master's office. Rousseau and Besedenhout answered their questions, but the SIU aren't answering ours. Like, are its officials leaking confidential information to Mario Rocha? I definitely get the idea that Mr. Rocha is not working by himself. Could he be a pawn in a game that's much bigger than he is? I yeah, most certainly can, yeah. In the end, Christine Rousseau resigned. She saw what had been done to Mike Shishonga and decided to sue the department like he did for constructive dismissal. Dede Mike, you left officially in 2005. Yes. Here we are in 2022 talking about the same things. What does that say to you? I'm not surprised because there is a lot of money in the liquidation. People want to have power over where the money is. Did they win, the bad guys here? I think they are trying to. I don't know if they will in the end. The department never did answer our questions. Tessie Besedenot is currently facing them down in a lengthy disciplinary hearing and Cluter Murray hangs on to fight another day. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.